Chapter 6, The Phoenicians and the Hebrews. So, the area that connects Mesopotamia and Egypt by the Mediterranean Sea is today known as Israel and Lebanon. Now, that area was called Canaan, and it basically served as a meeting point for those two cultures, because it's right smack dab in the middle. Now, two mostly peaceful groups lived in that area. They were called the Phoenicians and the Hebrews, and they contributed trade and other ideas to the world that are important still today. Section 1, the Phoenicians. Now, they lived mainly in northern Canaan. There were two main groups, the Canaanites and the Philistines. You have the Canaanites up here and the Philistines down here. Canaanites were farmers and herders, and the Philistines were shipbuilders primarily, and also traders. Now, in terms of the growth of trade, the, the uh, cities that in the area, they relied mostly on the sea for food and for a living as well. One of the reasons for that is that in the area around Lebanon, there were lots of cedar groves, and they were very had very good uh, shipbuilding wood um, from the cedar trees, and so they were able to make these great ships. And they were probably the best sailors of the time. They went very far away. There are even some some people who suggest that they made it all the way to the Americas, but that there's not a lot of proof of. But the Phoenicians they signed trees, which were agreements with other nations to give free shipping for continued independence, and. Basically, this is a, a map of some of the trading areas that they went to. They went further uh, than this area here. There's, um, it's pretty clear that they went all the way up to um, the United Kingdom, uh, Great Britain, that area there. So uh, it's pretty impressive. Now, the cities in Phoenicia, the area was not unified because there's mountains and uh, it was mainly made up of city-states. And we're going to use that term a lot in the upcoming chapters. All the city-states spoke uh, the same language and had the same religion, and the cities were ruled by different kings and councils of merchants. The cities had ports and walls and were oftentimes very crowded. One of the most important products was valuable uh, purple dye that came from a sea creature. These are actually the uh, sea creatures and you have to boil them. It was, it was just a nasty, smelly process, but uh, you could produce a few, uh, a few drops of purple dye for each of the hundreds of these sort of shells you would do. But that's the reason why purple is still a color of royalty because it was so valuable. So in terms of the gods and goddesses they believed in, the Phoenicians believed in many gods that were basically tied to nature and they built temples to have them. As a matter of fact, this is an image of Asarte, which was a kind of a mother goddess. Uh, you can see her holding on to the snakes and uh, uh, this sort of the, the beasts around her. So this is a real fertility uh, sort of deity. And priests made sacrifices in the most sacred chamber, which was called the Holy of Holies. Now, Carthage is the best-known colony of the Phoenicians, and this was in northern Africa, and we're going to come back to them when we deal with the Romans. And this here is actually what their port, it's believed, looked like, uh, this whole city. And see, so you've got your, your hippodrome, your uh, racetrack there. You've got your arena there. And then you've got your port here, which is uh, really important as well for all the trade. The Phoenicians' uh, contributions are probably most well known as the alphabet. And if you look here, this may seem pretty familiar also to, to the people that uh, can speak Hebrew here. Uh, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, and so on. And so these look very familiar because they are very similar to the Hebrew alphabet. The uh, Phoenician alphabet adapted, uh, was adapted from hieroglyphs and it became 22 letters to spell out words. And spelling out words is really important because then you don't have to memorize all these letters. And the Phoenician alphabet became the basis of the Greek, Roman, and, and eventually the English alphabet too. So section two, the Hebrews. The Hebrews religion today is called Judaism. And most of the Hebrews were nomadic herders who traveled, um, traveling merchants as well, who went all over the area. Now, this is all very important to understand. This is all according to the, the beliefs of Jews and uh, the Hebrew uh, version of the Bible, the Torah. This is what it says in there. So this is, uh, there's not a tremendous amount of proof of this stuff, but this is what is believed by Jews around the world. So first of all, there, uh, there's all the stories about Adam and Eve and everything like that, but uh, the first Jew was a guy named Abraham. And basically, Abraham made an agreement with God that if uh, if he went ahead and worshipped the one true God, that he would uh, that God would give to him 
uh, the land of Canaan forever. And actually, this is a very famous scene of, uh, of Abraham nearly sacrificing his son Isaac as a test that apparently Abraham, uh, well, Abraham passed because he was willing to give up his, his uh, son and he didn't hold him back. So um, moving on, Abraham's descendants, lots of them. Uh, there was Jacob and he had 12 sons and uh, that, those became the 12 tribes of the Hebrews. Now, the Hebrews were the first to believe in one all-powerful and just God um, that did not have human feelings or needs. Uh, instead of the uh, older gods, where basically they had these sort of human sort of feelings that, uh, that we see later on as well with, uh, in terms of Zeus and, and Apollo and all those sort of deities, that they actually have human characteristics to them. That, that is not the case with the, with the Hebrews' God. Um, Abraham and his family settled in Canaan, but eventually moved to Egypt because there was a drought and to get more food. And that's where we get Moses and the Ten Commandments, because the Hebrews eventually became uh, enslaved, and the Hebrew leader named Moses was able to end enslavement um, and lead the Hebrews out of Egypt into the Sinai Desert, where God took care of them. And this is uh, called the Exodus. It's a very important uh, literary term to know. That's what they're referring to uh, whenever people refer to Exodus. This is a reference to that. That's what the whole movie Prince of Egypt is on as well. So while the Hebrews were in the desert, they received a series of laws. Most important, these became the Ten Commandments. And this is actually an image from the movie The Ten Commandments, a uh, very famous movie, a uh, very big epic. And uh, it uh, basically is of Moses carrying around the Ten Commandments. Now these... Uh, these, it also renewed the covenant with God, and the Ten Commandments showed that uh, the Hebrews believed in social justice, that everybody had a right to be treated fairly. Now, the Promised Land, when uh, the Jews wandered around in the desert for 40 years, basically for a variety of reasons, but Joshua eventually took over when Moses died, and then they came back to Canaan, and while they were there, uh, they basically came, became farmers. And wasn't the greatest land, but uh, these are all the different tribes, and, and up here, all the different tribes of, of the area. So, and those are all the sons of Jacob. Now, eventually, the kings came, and uh, temporary leaders called judges were first, and then after that, um, after Joshua. But eventually, they, the Hebrews said that they wanted a king. First king was Saul, and then David and Solomon. And David wrote off Psalms, and uh, he helped to unite the Hebrews and defeat the Canaanites. Matter of fact, yes, David from the story of David and Goliath, and here's the scene of this is David carrying the uh, the head of Goliath uh, in triumph back after his battle. Now Solomon he made a lot of treaties with foreign nations, and he built the first temple, and this temple here is very very impressive. Um, and after Solomon died, came started to separate and was eventually conquered. There were prophets though that came along. The prophets were people who claimed to have a message from God. And they tried to provide some guidance for the Hebrews and remind them to live by God's laws. The uh, prophets were frequently ignored or they weren't paid all that much attention to. And eventually, Hebrews were conquered by the Babylonians and many of them were taken to Babylonia. And when the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, the Hebrews needed a way to worship God uh, while they were away from Canaan. So they started to meet on the Sabbath, which was this, uh, the day Saturday from Friday night to Saturday night. And they tried to worship uh, together. And the Hebrews, they wrote down the teachings and the laws of Moses in five books called the Torah. And other writings have been added, and now this forms what, what uh, Christians called the Old Testaments and what uh, Jews called the Tanakh. Now, their big contribution is this idea of how there's one true just God that many people believe. This is actually an image of from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel of Adam being created. Uh, by by God up there, and so, and just though that's probably the major thing because really without Judaism, you probably don't have Christianity, you probably don't have uh, Islam, and so that obviously is is an important aspect of how um, this group of people affected later history.